Hey everybody. Okay, so here I am on uh, this regular day and I wanted to do a live video, uh, actually do it tonight, but I am not emotionally in the place where I think a live video is appropriate. I am here, I mean physically I'm not it either. Like I'm here in this shirt that I'm pretty sure looks like a moo moo uh, and my eyebrows are jacked, my fingernails are chipped. Uh, I've got big fuzzy socks on that you can't see. I do have pants on, but really just only because I'm in the car and I had to walk out here. So, <laughs> this is not a normal for me. I'm usually um, uh, upbeat and good in a good place, but I'm telling you right now, uh, uh, Satan is trying to do a thing with natural, a default sadness, a mourning that happens in seasons like this. You see, we all have this natural default when there is a change, even if it's a good change, but this is not necessarily a good change that we're going through either, but even in a good change where we sort of default to a mourning, a grieving, because we don't care for change. We get in a, we get in a place Sometimes it's a rut. Even if it's if it's a good place, we're like, no, I'm I'm comfortable in my in my little my little rut. And so we default to mourning. And one of the things I've I've worked through several stages of this. Uh, I really truly do not have any fear about provisions. I do know the Lord is going to take care of us. I've seen Him do this in great ways over my entire life. No issue. Uh, and provisions through tragedy and trial. Y'all know the story of my life. It's, I'm not just talking about it. I've always lived a, a picket fence life. Um, I haven't. But that God has definitely provided. Uh, I'm, I don't have any fear about the sickness. I really believe that my immune system is strong. Not that I am invincible, but I am strong. And it's less likely that I'm going to get that. But even if I do, I believe again that God uses trial and tragedy for his great purpose and pleasure and to give testimony for me to share of that. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, people bother me a little bit. A little worried about how people are going to react because people are stupid, including myself. So that's where that is. But the morning that I'm dealing with right now is church, is Easter, corporate worship. I, I... I need my people. And for, for you introverts out there, which I am a good combination of both. Um, I, I do love my people. I also do love a very quiet house uh, when nobody is there where I can just nobody. I love that. Uh, and I crave those times. But I am primarily an extrovert. And so for you introverts out there who are like, um, y'all get over yourself and stay home. It's, it's a physical issue. Like, we love people. I'm not saying you don't love people. Don't put words in my mouth there. I'm just saying there's a difference in our personalities. And so, have a little grace. We're struggling. Especially for worship. Especially for that grouping that we get to go to every single week and profess the name of Jesus Christ with arms spread wide, singing His name together. Oh. So, anyways, I don't know that that's the total of why I'm off right now, but doggone, I'm off. I tell these long stories. To say there's a purpose in this because I know the Lord, several days ago, actually a couple days ago, the, the verse of the day was Psalm 68, 19. Uh, Blessed be the Lord, day after day, He bears our burdens. God is our salvation. Now, of course, that verse um, moved through my spirit. It, it was such a beautiful, resounding thing to me. But the word that stood out is one that we often skip over, Selah. Selah. So, I did some looking. What does Selah mean? And we all have our own, um, own version definition of that. But here's the, the biblical definitions I looked up. Uh, the Hebrew lexicon means to lift up or exalt. Uh, some scholars say it means to silence or pause. And I think that's what we often um, uh, refer to it as. Pause, sip on this, meditate, devour that scripture. 
Uh, another one is a piano. Uh, it's a musical term, which means a louder strain. So like, bong, that should resound through your system. Uh, it's also known as an intermiss intermission in the septu septuagint. Um, Septuagint. I'm sorry, I never said that right. This is the earliest Greek translation of the Old Testament. And so, anyway it goes, we have got, you can take this any direction, and I feel like it all has the same um, measure of, um, a profound measure to it. We can lift up, exalt, lift up the fact that blessed be the Lord, that God is our salvation. Be silent and think about that. Think about that. Rachel's added definition there is get ready for what's next. In verse 20, God is a is our salvation. Wait, I'm sorry, that was 19. Our God is a God of salvation, and escape from death belongs to to the Lord, my Lord. Surely God crushes the heads of his enemies, the hairy brow of one who goes on in his guilty acts. The Lord says, I will bring them back from Bashan. I will bring them back from the depths of the sea so that your foot may wade in blood and your dog's tongues may have their share from the enemies. That's outside of what we're talking about right now. People have seen your procession, God, the procession of my God, my King, in the sanctuary. Singers lead the way with musicians following. Among them are young women playing tambourines. Blessed God in the assemblies. Blessed the Lord from the fountain of Israel. And on and on and on we can go. Get ready for what's next. Selah. So I put on here this big long title. Sadness, Selah, Shalom, and Satan. So here's what I say to you right now in this season where we default to sadness because we do not know what's next. There are so many unknowns and there's so much going on out there. Satan is going to try to use your natural sadness. He's going to try to distract from your ability to say love. It's going to take you sitting still to be able to lift up, to silence, to hear that loud strain through that still small voice. It's going to take you sailing to be able to get an inner vision through God's Word at what is next. No, no, we're not going to get exactly what we want. We don't need, we don't need all the information that we're getting right now. We don't, you're not going to be able to see exactly what you want. However, you're going to be able to see the pattern of God as you sayla. And as you sayla, that will move you into shalom. And then you're going to be able to testify with what God did with your sadness and how he crushed Satan underneath his foot. Friends, I'm telling you, God is with you. He is for you. I'm begging you. I'm going to tell you, one of the things I do believe is a little bit of a morning, and I know it's because of where everybody's at, and I'm, I'll be okay with this. But it feels like I'm shouting into a big black hole as I am sharing the gospel, as I am sharing the encouragement to continue to eat well and to exercise. I feel like I'm just screaming at a wall. And I know there's lots of you responding. There's things. This is not a, a, a direct message to any one of you. It's just what it feels like right now. Uh, and, and so as that happens... I can tend, as we all do, tend to shift towards, well, I'm not being paid attention to. What is? What am I doing wrong, God? Where am I dishonoring you? And I feel him saying, Shh. meditate on the fact that I'm doing something. And in the midst of that, you may lean back and you may actually get some good rest. Rest in the confidence that is the righteousness of Christ. I'm going to tag along with this, a song that my sweet friend, Amanda Welton, has been sending the music to me lately. Good stuff. And it's called The Water by I Am They. Uh, I have had this album on my phone, and it has never come up. And you know what? I believe that the Lord reserves things like this for moments such as this so that we will be prepared to live in Selah and to live in Shalom. Okay. God bless you, sweet friends. I, I can't pray for all of you by name. But I definitely am praying for you as a whole. God, refine our hearts. Continue to do so.
God bless you, friends.